All right, so you got your tried and true Chevy work truck here. Let's so say you have like a 98 or like that area truck with the computer controlled cancer case with the buttons. And you're wondering if it's possible to convert that transfer case to something like an older truck would have where it's on the floor like that. Uh, I guess the answer to that question would be yes. So you can see like we've done that with this truck, which as you can see, does have the electric buttons there, but they don't do anything anymore because we converted everything to manual. As you can see, like that is shifting the transfer case. And then what you also have to do with that is get well, they make kits that you can cobble something, but I'd highly recommend you get that because it's really nice. You can find videos on YouTube where people cobble together this kind of Because that is for the front axle actuator that locks the three axle shafts in the front together so that you can have power going to the front, right? Right. It'll couple the two half shafts together in the front axle. Um, does the, the same damn, thing yeah. as Jeep's. Uh, the other truck that you just saw does the same thing, basically. It's a vacuum. Um, ours this is electric. Right. Uh, and this is about, this. I don't know. You'll hear about the two different kinds of actuators up front. There's um, the thermal version of the unit, which was the older um, one that you probably heard about going out fairly often. Um, it was usually uh, the worst of the two. And then there is an electric actuator. Um, both of them uh, get pretty expensive to replace. Because, um, I mean, the front motor on the transfer case is like 180 bucks, right? 150, 160 ish. And then yeah. how much is the front actuator? Uh, the front electric actuator was about 80 bucks. How much was that? The manual cable shift? Because that runs a cable all the way to that front ac uh, actuator where that goes in. There's a aluminum housing and everything that threads in there. It seals it's watertight. And that actuates. It does the same thing, but it's manual. And it, right. that's not going to break or wear out ever. Right. The kit was 160 bucks uh, from a company called PosiLock. Uh, you can just look again. them up. Um, they have two different styles of kits, one for uh, three-quarter three -quarter ton and one-ton trucks, and this one was just the one for the half-ton. Um, I believe this was the 800 series, the 600 series is for the three-quarter ton and half-ton. Uh, taking a look at the actual shift pattern here, uh, all the way forward like this is too high. One back like that is going to be four high. This position right here, uh, we don't like to talk about this, disregard that. Uh, it is kind of a, a blank space between the high range and the low range. The only time it should be in this position is if it's going past it. And then all the way back is going to be for low. Shifting into low range is just like any other transfer case. You want to be aggressive with it, don't just slowly pull it in or it will grind. Um, as far as actuating the front axle with this, always make sure that you pull this into four high from two high uh, before actuating the front axle. Uh, that being when you're moving um, in two wheel drive, the half shafts in the front axle are spinning in opposite directions. So if you try to engage this while that is going on, you can probably guess what will happen. Always shift it into four high at the transfer case before shifting it here. Different person now. Magic. So on the transfer case, the shift pattern, this on the transfer case looks like this. And this is the position for it in too high. Too high. And then one click forward, which you'll feel like there's detents on right. the shifting. It's just like a manual thing. transfer case. There's detents in there. It's literally the only thing that's different about this transfer case versus a manual one is that it doesn't have a threaded part where you can hold this on. Right. It's just got an electric motor bolted to the side. And so you know, there's your two high position, that's four high. There's another click that doesn't seem to do anything. It's not a neutral and you can't drive around in it. And then one more click is four low. Correct. So that was the first thing we figured out. And that's important because that means that it's possible to do this with like a linear actuator. We, so we weren't sure if that electric motor was going to make it go like one way to four high and then back a bunch to blow. We weren't sure. Or if the motor made the peg turn all the way around for one shift. Yeah. Which I'm sure we could have just looked at that exploded view diagram and figured that out, but we're done. So. Alright, so now we're up under the truck here and there is the 
plate we showed you earlier that we uh, goes onto the shifting fork of the transfer case. That blue piece you can see is another one of these. You have this part here. This part comes off of an NP241 transfer case found in the early, uh, earlier 90 models. And those do have like a legitimate like shift. Right, th those are the ones that came with a manual shift transfer case. And all we're doing is putting that onto the side of the shift right. knob of our transfer case yes. because it has one and it's the same, well it's a similar size. This gets slapped on about there. And if you look at that, that's the size of the slot. It's a round peg with a rectangle ground onto it. So. Right. Like if you were to, like this is a round thing and they ground it like that. And the, the shape of that rectangle is, it's 9 16 by 3 quarters. So that's what we had to grind. This was smaller, I don't know what it was. I hand filed a better one out because that was right. a little too Mind nice. the cobbling job there. Also, this from the factory comes at a slight angle. You have to maintain that angle. You can see that this one is more straight, which is not good. Yeah, if um, you maintain that angle, it You helps. have to maintain that angle. Also, with that, you have to uh, make a clearance on the top here, because when it is all the way back in such position in the truck, this part right here will come in contact with uh, the case on the uh, back of the transfer case. That just gives it a little bit of right. air space. And um, there's a connected to our linkage here, which is just some bar stock. And then that's up into the shifter in the floor. So if you want to pull it into just four high, let's say. There, that is four high. And then you know, let's go, just go all the way to low. There's low. You want to go back one at a time. There's the neutral that we don't There's the neutral we don't talk about or use. That's four high. And there's your two high. All right, so now moving on. You see there is a gap between the transfer case and this scrap of metal plate right here we use, which is complete overkill. Um, but that does bolt right into the holes that the electric motor used to bolt into. I think we only used, uh, we used only two of the holes. The motor held them by three. You can see the third one right there. Two uh, hold the shift lever onto the side of the transfer case because it does not have um, the end of the peg on the shift fork is not threaded like other older style transfer cases uh, would be um, so we had to make a, a means of holding that on there you don't need to go nuts tight with these things because it is aluminum um, if you strip it oh <laughs> good one it was a little too loose. We tried to fix it, didn't work. So I, we went and got another one, and then we spent a lot more time hand flying that to the right size, that a uh, nine sixteenths by three quarter inch slot. Um, and you don't want that to be a press fit because the detent itself or the uh, shaft this goes onto can move into the transfer case some, and that's what happened the first time where we. Uh, Went to like hammer it on to more of like a press fit, and it was not happy about it. There's an o ring that seals the uh, oil in there, and we, for lack of better words, fucked it up. And what we ended up doing was just going to a tractor supply and getting another o ring that was the right size after we dug the old one out. And we, that was like 30 cents, so if you screw that up at all, or while you're in there, I'd replace that just because it doesn't cost anything and it's, it's gonna leak out if that o ring leaks. Uh, some extra information here, uh, the o-ring that goes on the shift fork peg that comes out of the side of the transfer case. This was an extra one that we had bought. This is the size that fits on there um, pretty well. You can just use a pick and get the old one out. Uh, the chances of it leaking when you take that motor off are pretty high. Don't look in some gasket set for one of these things because you're not going to find it and you're not, you know and I know you're not going to go spend the money on a gasket set for this transfer case. Who are we kidding? Um, that there is the size that fits in there, right, Minty? And the reason things are rusty is we did this quite some time ago, and Mother Nature has not been very nice to the Chevy. But it will persevere. All right, here you can see one of the the '90s Chevy work trucks that came with the manual shifter. See, it's got this nice plate that covers things, which you don't need. 
we're comparing that to the Mintia linkage that was installed in here. You can see it sits a bit further up in there. Uh, you will have to, if you're going to mount it up there, you're going to have to remove um, the vent extension that comes off of here. Uh, if you're going to do it like this, um, because the too high position sits all the way forward in here, and you can see on the other one, that too high position sat pretty vertical. Uh, we did take a piece of uh, old fuel hose, drilled two little slots in there after dremeling out um, a good bit of this material because kept catching your, the top of your thumb on there when you'd shift it. All right, right here we can see the cable for the front axle linkage. It's kind of difficult to see, but right about there, there's a little rubber grommet, comes in the kit as well. Uh, the posi lock kit you will have to drill a hole in your firewall it gives you the size of what you should drill that out to you can find a spot uh, where we drilled it was right up by um, the gas pedal right up above the uh, the pivot mount for it this snakes its way around here down to the front axle you can see it right there here is the view from down below. You can see this cable comes down. There's a bracket here. Kit comes with some little bits of hardware. Mounts right up to this part. This is where the original actuator screws into. There's a nice machined part that it comes with. Rubber steel. This post that goes in there that actually uh, couples the axle shafts pivot plate for it, cable comes out, attaches there. If you want to go ahead and actuate it, you can see that's all it does. Just couples the axle shafts. You'll know when it's all the way in. Right here, right here. Uh, this is where the the shift lever comes down through the floor. This is all one piece um, that was fit in here. You can see the lever going back. This will come in contact with the fuel lines that work their way back or uh, up from the back of the truck. You can just zip tie these out of the way. It'll be fine. Um, just don't put too much tension on them. It just has to clear this. 